How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about how to rock engineering school. I'm going to talk about my experiences on how I did well myself. As you know, I work as an engineer by day and by night I make these YouTube videos. Now I've attained at least a Bachelor of Science already with honors, so it's you know, I got really good grades. I graduated within four years and my last quarter was a little bit of a freebie because I was a little bit ahead. And so at the last quarter, I took, you know, several classes that I don't really need. The main points that got me through school mainly was a math class in high school where my math teacher actually taught really advanced stuff and she taught it really, really well. I have to credit a lot of my math knowledge, um, at least the beginning stuff, um, to her, in order to have a really good solid foundation, it really helps you um, learn everything afterwards, like calculus one, two, three, volumetric calculus, you know, all the way up uh, matrices, uh, differential equations, and on and on and on. I'll have to say at least about 80% of the skills that I'm using day to day was learned on the job. You don't always go around using volumetric calculus or anything like that because there's, you know, things are never. Um, that nice. Things are not in a nice equation where you can just integrate over. Statistics, however, is much more important than calculus, I think, and perhaps that should be placed um, as a priority over learning calculus. Now, what I'm saying here is in order to get good grades, uh, easily succeed in college is to have a solid foundation. So you really need to start all the way back, I don't know, in grade school, so that you never fall behind. Because once you fall behind a little bit, then Everything else that you learn afterwards is just going to be kind of like a puzzle. So if you're on the ball, you need to be on the ball, you know, basically the whole time so that you don't miss any material as it comes in so that you know it very well. For programming classes, and I did several of those, you generally make a project, you program something, and then you have an executable or whatnot, and then um, the TA, they would execute it and see um, if the output is correct. This includes perhaps making like assembly games, you know, if you're learning assembly, or, you know, whatever transfer file or something over the internet, programming, stuff like that. I went to a university and I was quite shocked that some programming classes you can actually still pass even if your program or several of them do not actually run. They might look at your program and go, oh, okay, um, you know, you have a printout of the program, however, it does not run. In real life, your program must absolutely run if you want to get a paycheck. If your program keeps on failing and never runs, well, you're never gonna get your paycheck. You're gonna get fired pretty quickly. I went to a university college and I have to note that some people who went to a community college, I'll have to say, those community colleges that teaches, you know, the prerequisite and things like that, generally what I found through the people I know, they actually did not perform as well or that right when they entered into un university, they have a hard time catching up. So it probably is a universal fact that if you go to a community college to take those courses that, you know, maybe for one reason or another, you don't want to pay um, the university tuition, you just want to go to a community college. I feel that it does not prepare you well enough um, to uh, just switch over to a university level classes at right afterwards. It is absolutely doable because I know people that have graduated, but they were actually um, struggling a little bit. They have to um, spend, you know, two, three times as much effort in order to catch up. For example, if you took, you know, calculus one or two, and then suddenly uh, you went to university and then you took uh, the third calculus, then um, the third one might assume that you know a lot of um, all the material in calculus one and two, and perhaps um, the community college level is a little bit more relaxed. So then you might not learn everything you need to know um, in the third level uh, university class. So me being a nerd and getting honors in my degree, sometimes when I'm taking physics classes, I would be, well, kind of um, way up on the curve. Um, it wasn't intentional. I did not actually uh, study very, very hard. I was just very, very interested in the material, which was, um, I think, physics uh, 1A, 1B, 1C or something, the first three classes of physics. I was just super interested in it. I'm like, wow, this is great. You know, I can do this. The point with doing well to me is that you have to really like the subject. For me, um, in engineering, I kind of decided that I wanted to be an engineer way, really, really early on. I think probably uh, fifth grade, sixth grade, I, I'm like, man, I'm going to be 
an engineer. That's what I'm gonna be because even back then, you know, I'd like assemble stuff with batteries and fans, and I bring it to school and show people. So I was completing circuits already, you know, at that young, young age. Why do I mention if you're passionate about it or not? Because I do have friends that were not passionate about engineering, and because of this, okay, this is a very core value. If you're not interested in it, then when you pick up the books, you're not going to absorb the material as well, unless you have really, really good willpower. You're like, yeah, I'm going to force myself to learn this. And yet it doesn't flow as well for me. I'm like, yeah, I really like this stuff. So, I'll, you know, I'm just reading it. I'm just, you know, I wouldn't say like when I read a uh, calculus, I'm like entertained by it, but I was interested in it enough. Like, for example, when I um, took electrical classes, I was interested in it enough that I'm like, oh, okay. Um, things just get absorbed very easily. I personally am not good at every single subject there is. So every single person have their strong points, right? So my weak points would be, I don't know, the English courses that I took, the econ economics classes that I took. When I took those courses, I didn't do too well. My type of um, attributes is probably not the best in memorizing things. So um, I know right off top, if I try to be a doctor, I'm not gonna be so good at it because doctors tend to need to memorize a lot more stuff than an engineering does. An engineer, what you need to do is um, understand processes. When you go look at the material, when you read it, um, a lot of times you don't have to memorize anything at all. You just have to understand it. Once you understand it, it just kind of gets stored in your brain and it's very, very compact. You, you have an understanding of it. Once you understand it, you don't really have to memorize anything and you can just perhaps in a test, you just derive it. You go, oh yeah, um, point A uh, goes to point B in such a way. Uh, point B goes to point C um, in this other way. So it's basically understanding how it works and that's basically all of engineering. I have to say most of the time whenever you're studying for a class, if you're studying several chapters, sometimes they would have multiple equations that you're supposed to memorize or something like that. Maybe they give you a cheat sheet and write it all down. Yeah, I write lots of cheat sheet and you have to write very tiny and, and make sure everything fits. However, many, many times, if they do not allow you a cheat sheet, most of the time, these equations and things can be sort of condensed into a handful of um, equations, for, for example, like three or four of them every single test. So it becomes a lot easier to just memorize those and then for every single equation, you just kind of know, okay, in order to get from here to this other equation that you know, you just kind of memorize the process on how to convert it from one thing to another. And if you're sitting in a test and you go, oh, I need that equation. And you're like, oh, I don't know that one, but I know the first one. And you can just write there, yes, it takes a little bit of time if you forgot the, the other equation, but it for me, it takes a lot longer to try and memorize dry memorize each and everything. And plus, if you dry memorize things, you you know do not absorb it as well. I know this is kind of vague and it's on purpose because it's meant to cover every single class there is. It's just kind of a philosophy on how to study and how to succeed well in engineering in general. I really hope these tips help you enter into the engineering field or if you're a student already, it is back to school. Maybe you can apply these tips um, in the future years. Don't forget to give me a like on this video, comment down below, let me know if these tips help you. And if they really do, maybe I'll make a follow up video uh, to this one. If you're interested in supporting this channel, don't forget to check out my Audible link down in the video description below where you can get a free audiobook. And if you don't like this audiobook or the service, you can cancel it before the subscription ends. And you can still keep this audiobook forever, basically, and you can still help benefit this channel. And if you cancel it, you don't have to owe a thing. If you're interested in supporting my channel directly, I have a Patreon link over here where I give various perks at various contribution levels. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel over here and click that bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you get a notification whenever I upload a brand new video. Thanks for watching.